Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about Gas Insulated Transmission Line or GIL. So let's dive right into it. Now why do we need something this fancy like gas insulated? Well, the reality is that we are moving from different kind of uh, power generation to a different kind of power generation. We are going to what we call distributed generation. Because back in the days, as in like early 1900s, we built our power structure on the simple logic of that we're gonna have big ass power plants and then we're gonna have distribution, the end. Now we have distribu uh, distributed generation. What does that mean? That simply means you can literally have multiple solar farm spread literally middle out of nowhere and you have to carry gigawatts of power from A to B. And our grid was not built for that. It was built for like, we know we have a power plant and we distribute power. So this ecosystem is not uh, compatible, so to say. So we are adding a lot of solar power, a lot of wind power. All that simply means many times you could uh, reach a point where this puppy, as in the backbone of the grid, is not capable enough. Meaning there is not enough transmission line. There is not enough spare capacity to move enough power from A to B. So you do not have like what we call power containment. Because many times you will see a solar farm, you will think, hey, they must be making a lot of power. Many times not. Why? Because again, if the grid lines are overloaded, they have to shut down the power meaning the inverter shutdown. Many times same thing happens with wind farm. Like if you are seeing a lot of wind turbines and none of them are spinning, there's a very good chance that they have to do what we call power curtailment. Overproduction is happening. Again, it's not that there is no demand for it, just that grid is the weak link here. Grid is unable to carry enough power from enough places to enough every. Basically, we do not have good truncation. So uh, why not we just build more of this? We have one century of experience of building this overhead power lines. Now they do work, but if you really want to carry some GG amounts of power, meaning around 200 kV, 300 kV, megawatts, gigawatts of power, uh, they become extremely land hungry. Meaning uh, if you have to carry, let's say 10 gigawatts of power to Delhi, yeah, good luck. It's going to take insanely large amount of land patch to dump that kind of power. Same goes with Frankfurt, same goes with every major metropolitan. You simply cannot have enough land area. And not to mention, even in uh, like, you know, out areas and all that jazz, you still do not want to like, you know, take away hundreds of uh, hectares of uh, farmable land for transmission line. So they are extremely land hungry. And what about underground cable? Again, can you bury underground uh, AC cable? Yes, but generally not recommended because they have much worse capacitance properties and they lose a lot of power, meaning that's why generally it costs exponentially more. So if one megawatt carrying capacity for one kilometer versus uh, over air versus underground, underground would be much, much, much more expensive, much more worse also. So fundamentally, nobody wants to do it. If you have no other choice, of course you will do it. But it's not a, what you call, hey, first choice. No, it's like worst choice. Uh, what about high voltage DC line? Again, no capacitance loss, awesome. No range limitation, super awesome. But cost goes GG. Cost is super duper high. Why? Uh, the dielectric strength required, meaning this puppy, the white puppy that you see here, uh, that's a very top quality uh, basically insulator. And that insulator is directly proportional to voltage. Meaning if you're like, hey, I want 500, like for example, that is 500 kV, it's gonna be this thick. But what if you want like uh, one mega V? basically uh, 1000 kV. At that point in time, that will become super thick and that's expensive. It may look like just a paste, but again, from industrial point of view, it has to be absolutely void free while you are extruding it. If it's not there, it's gonna go boom. But the amount of energy that goes through these sort of cable is insane. So even minor variation, minor defect equals kaboom. And I actually mean kaboom. So hyper expensive and per meter cost, as in like how much you have to pay, could be as high as like $5,000 per meter. So yeah, expensive puppy. So we need something that can carry this amount of power without, you know, bl uh, blowing a hole in our bank account. So fundamentally, we have to figure out something that is like, you know, as cheap and as capable as this. And uh, that's the whole point. We need something that is cheap and also compact, meaning uh, the overhead transmission line would be acceptable if they were not scaling up. Meaning if I like 200 kV, that's the same as 500 kV, 600 kV. No, what happens is like 200 kV, 300 kV. 500 kV, at 800 kV, it literally looks like Eiffel Tower. And um, there are some uh, ultra high voltage that is in like around 1200 kV. It will look stupid. If you ever get to see a 1200 kV line, transmission line, you will know it. That's how huge it is. It's like bonkers. So it scales up, meaning instead of consuming like few square meters, it will start to consume hundreds of square meter of land. So we need something that is compact also. 
and high capacity meaning it cannot be just like under um, you know underground ac cable where it's like it is a good option it has been used in some scenario but it's like yeah you can't send too much power it does not even have thermal capacity as in like it heats up again you have to be mindful the electric strength is directly proportional to heat so if it heats up too much bye bye electricity so there is a very serious need here so the logic was is that we have already developed what you call gas insulated switch yard meaning we figured out this puppy because our switch yard itself was becoming huge why air insulation air is a pretty pathetic insulation and if you like why not vacuum again vacuum is also pretty pathetic insulation simply because if you have a conductor naked conductor it literally can give off electrons if you have too much power going again it can literally evaporate and i did not even knew that that does happen it can evaporate stuff out of it now if you had a th even a few molecules thin uh, molecule as in like few atoms line to the shell it is going to create an arc the moment it has arc now you have a plasma wall at that point in time it's a dead short circuit so that's why we have to have something there to stop it so gas insulation does work now it's a expansion of the same technology that we developed for circuit breaker circuit breaker how the heck we made sure circuit breaker does not go boom every time we disconnect it we had sf6 gas so somebody is like what if we have a conductor put a tube around it and put SF6 gas. People were like, hey, good idea. We did it. This is what we call GIS, surprisingly compact. So instead of like your power plants, uh, basically transmission line consuming a lot of land, your substation was also getting huger and huger and even more huge. So this is like, okay, let's bring it down. Because again, even governments have limit on how much land they can have. So this was a very amazing technology. And somebody figured out, hey, what if we use the same technology that is like, you know, allowing us to pack such a high megawatt capacity substation in a small building to like, you know, just on the transmission line, same thing. So sulfur hexafluoride at eight bar pressure is surprisingly good at insulator, meaning this puppy can insulate around 1000 kV. That's a like GG amounts of insulation. And it does give you location freedom, meaning it does not care. If you're making the system, it does not care about the grades, slopes, tunnels, verticality, it does not care. You can see this uh, photography as of such a very good example. You can see all three lines. Each line could be carrying multiple megawatts, as in like 50, 100, 1000 megawatts, and they can be close to each other. Compact part. So you can make it very compact. And again, this is a switch gear, and there is a dude, and you can see it like it's on the same human scale. Why? density it's very compact you can make them extremely compact it does need eight bars like be mindful it does not require eight bar for everything sometimes you can run it at seven sometimes at five but generally eight bar is like maximum you don't need more than that so that's the logic of it if we had the technology somebody's like what if we stretch the technology so you can have slopes grade tunnel none of the issues that you have to deal with and another aspect is capacitance loss is much lower compared to normal ac buried line because ac buried line will have insulator layer that will act as a bad capacitor here nothing sf6 gas is much better so really really good performance so it does not have that inherent limitation where it's like hey every line is built in such a way that it can handle over capacity for a few minutes this puppy is like i got you normal cables is like bro i'm gonna be fried so how do you build this magical technology? Well, it's surprisingly simple. It's a tube inside the tube. So you have a tube and you have another tube. Done, go home. It's nothing fancy. It's like it's just tube inside a tube. Now you have to understand how the heck you isolate the core tube, basically the conductor. You use what we call epoxy resin uh, post, basically this thing. And that's the same thing. It is same technology is used for that HVDC cable. But here, there you have complete extrusion. Here is just post. And again, you do have a bit more leeway in terms of distance. So if the post can be as thin as uh, less, as small as one inch, they will make it two inch just to have that extra buffer. So even the post quality, if let's say not absolutely perfect, electrons cannot just make love from the core to the casing. Be mindful, casing is grounded. So that's the whole idea of it. You have uh, posts and be mindful, some designs have disc. If the pressure is required too high or the structure is too huge, they may have disc rather than post. It's up to them. They have particle trap uh, on the bottom layer because again, things do evaporate. You have a lot of electricity, things do start to come off. So you, they need something that traps it kind of, stabilizes the air around it, so to say. Air as in like the SF6 gas. And they have to do what we call orbital welding on site, meaning these things are not, again, it's not something that you can spool up because we mindful five to seven bar is same as like LPG tanks. Um, 
in indian uh, scenario it's like cooking gas tank in case of american audience think of it this way uh, propane tanks is the walls are thick they can handle some serious amount of pressure so they are thick so you cannot roll them so how do they carry them they carry as big of a segment as possible from factory and on site it's welded using something like this like orbital welders i have given a video example down below so you just have a machine there it goes around welds it properly orbital welding on site and after every few uh, joints basically let's say five six segments you will have expansion joint again that's a very specific kind of corrugated sheet metal design which allows them to uh, some scenarios they are also using silicon so it can expand and contract much more efficiently without fatiguing too much and still have the gas pressure needed so it's surprisingly simple now be mindful the central thing would rarely be a rod it generally would be a tube now why well ac current ac current is very ugly simply because it has skin effect meaning if if you had this thick of a rod you will think oh we're gonna use so much conductor no it will only travel on the outside now depending on your frequency it could be very little uh, skin effect or it could be a lot of skin effect meaning if you have to choose between 50 hertz 60 hertz choose 50 hertz because 50 hertz have less skin effect so, but it does mean that no matter what you do, even at 50 or 60, you can't use the whole conductor. But if you have a hollow conductor, now electricity behaves erratically, meaning it creates a skin effect from the outside. It also creates a skin effect from the inside, meaning now you can actually carry more practical amount of currents. That's why a hollow tube, inside a hollow tube is far more better. So these are generally used and uh, they are using generally aluminum because again from an environmental point of view it's a good metal not hyper expensive and very resistant to basically pressure expansion and not to mention water also so it's a good choice that's the build it's surprisingly simple it's just aluminum tube inside another aluminum tube with some uh, very high voltage post so what about deployment? Has this been actually done? Well, yes, there are a lot of countries that are pouring boatload of money into it without even like, this is a one of those background technology, meaning it's happening in the background and nobody's even noticing it. So you are talking about China, Japan, Germany, England, they're pouring money into it like no, there is nobody's business. Because again, specified how the heck you bring power to a metropolitan? How? Like think about it, it's like how if let's say a metropolitan grew, let's say Tokyo grew, how the heck you gonna dump a power there? It's like think about it, it's like how the heck you're gonna bring let's say 8 gigawatt, let's say you have generation farm, like you have multiple soft farm, you have multiple wind farms, you have multiple nuclear farm, whatever, have whatever have you, but how the heck you're gonna transfer that kind of energy without like creating giant corridors that are like you know runway size corridors where you are dumping that much electricity, you won't, so this technology. And uh, China went bonkers with this technology. China literally built this uh, Yangtze River Tunnel, uh, which is like 4. Point, uh, basically 5.4 kilometer long at 1000 kV. This is the tunnel. Yes, this is a tunnel that's just used for carrying electricity from A to B. The rated capacity is around one gigawatt. So boatload of power, like bonkers amount of power. And uh, it's like 75 meter deep and voltage rating is also stupid. It's 1000 kV. Uh, last time I checked, this is the highest. There are other systems that goes to 1200, but they are only for small scale. And transmission line, I have not seen anything. If you have noticed any transmission line that is running at that voltage, do link me down below. So this is directly under. Now, why the heck they did it? It was the cheapest. Can they have done high voltage DC? Yes, but again, it's expensive. And not to mention, HVDC does require converter st stations that are even more expensive. So many times for short uh, jumps, like basically hop of six to seven kilometer, it's unwise to like, you know, build a HVDC converter station. So at that point in time, they are like, just, just go with AC. It does require them to build a tunnel, does require them to use gas insulation line, but it does not have the side effect if they used normal conductors, which are used as a like, you know, connection link, auxiliary links, uh, it will not have that capacitance loss. So it's a really good way. And a lot of countries are pouring a lot of money into it. There may be one near you, you may have not noticed it. So what we can expect in the future? Well, it's the reality is very simple. It allows us to lay a lot of power for a lot of low cost, meaning we are not requiring something magical. And the, even though orbital welding sounds complex, it's ironically old technology used for oil and gas industry and majority of our uh, industrial plants have already figured it out. Just somebody figured out control C, control V, that's it. And it allows you to have a lot of power brought into an urban area. And not to mention because of the substation scaling that we can achieve because of gas insulation switch yard, the rest is also smaller, so everything can now become compact. So just by looking at size, you may not be able to tell, hey, that's a 30 uh, megawatt capacity, that's like 100 megawatt capacity. With this, you may be looking at something that looks small and it may have the capacity of like, you know, gigawatts. 
the only thing that has not scaled is transformer. Everything else has scaled. Transformer has not scaled. The only way you can scale transformer is go to superconductor. Some companies are working on it, but it's kind of expensive. But at that point, yeah, you can have something that looks tiny and could literally take care of a country. You can make something that tiny. It also allows under river, so you no longer have that water body crossing issue. And we need all tools possible. It's not like, oh, it's gonna replace every overhead wire. No, overhead are still the cheapest. So if you are in a place where you do not have enough life, as in like you do not have enough people living there, land cost is low enough, just go over the land. So every core principle goes to the same logic. It's like, do you have a right tool for the right job? Because again, cost is a very serious limitation. You cannot just like, lol, it will, you will go bankrupt like Sri Lanka or Pakistan. So it's a very seriously, uh, consideration that you have to put into the place where it's like oh this tool works here better and people are working on making better gas mix because if you are familiar with basically sf6 gas it's not a good gas because it does have very high gwp meaning global warming potential is much higher so people are trying to build a third generation technology because gen 1 had sf6 gas that's it done gen 2 technology had sf6 gas with nitrogen mixing so they had as high as 80 uh, percent nitrogen now nitrogen is an insulator but not as strong insulator as sf6 that's why it's not 100 percent nitrogen but if you are working on low voltage as in like 200 kv kind of range you can have just nitrogen only benefit of nitrogen it's completely inert so nobody has to worry about it and even if it leaks nobody has to worry about it it's nitrogen it's already the major component of atmosphere and some companies are working on third gen technology which will have a different kind of synthetic gas which maybe have a lower gwp and may not be as costly let's see so this tunnel a tube of a tube inside a tube is our future you may not see it, but it, it will be coming near you. I guarantee it. So this was my presentation on basically gas insulated switch line, uh, gas insulated transmission line. Hopefully you have liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.